Hi folks, I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. Well, you can pray for clear skies tonight because you have a good chance of seeing the northern lights. On Thursday the 14th of this month, the sun spit out a huge flare along with a massive radio burst causing two hours of radio interference in parts of the United States and other sunlit parts of the world. Scientists at the National Oceanic Administration said it was the biggest flare since 2017. It was a um, X2.87, I believe. And the uh, radio burst was extensive, even affecting higher frequencies. The combination resulted in one of the largest solar radio events ever recorded, said NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center. Uh, multiple pilots reported communication disruptions with the impact felt across the country, according to the Space Weather Forecasting Center. Yeah, and so we're going to have a good possibility of seeing auroras tonight. So this comes from their prediction center. Where I am at, yeah, I woke up to snow and it's still real cloudy, so I don't think I'm going to be able to see but there's the image of it impacting the earth. Um, this came off of the eastern limb of the sun, so that was a good thing. It wasn't a direct impact uh, for all the effects that it did have upon the earth. If you do have clear skies, maybe you'll be able to see the auroras tonight. Wouldn't that be wonderful? And seeing how there's not going to be a moon, um, that will make it even more helpful. Let's watch that come across again. Okay. Right there. Now this is only a predict prediction. Um, sometime tonight and into early tomorrow. Here's another image for tonight's aurora forecast that they're predicting. You can see Oregon, uh, Montana, North Dakota. Maybe a little tiny bit of South Dakota, Minnesota maybe a little bit of Wisconsin yeah and then up over here well not too much let me bring it down a little bit yeah I hope we have clear skies I'm gonna go out tonight with my daughter and grandchildren look at the Christmas lights out at the lake um, but we got cloudy skies here like I said it snowed last night now the viewing line can you see the red viewing line so it does have South Dakota, and it does have Michigan, and right along parts of New York, Maine, and maybe Vermont. And then we got a little tiny bit down here, maybe Missouri. Boy, wouldn't that be wonderful? More likely it just look green to us down here, but I don't know. Many, many, many years ago, I got to see the sheets of the northern lights here in South Dakota. Um, that was before there was internet and cell phones and things like that. Yeah, it's, it's something I'll always remember. Here's another image of the coronal hole, which is going to be shooting out all the winds towards the earth. Over here is that area that's really active. Let me go to another image for you. All this came from Sunspot 3514, which is off over here on the eastern limb, currently going to be going around the back side of the sun. Up over here would be the, uh, um, that cooler area. Yeah, yeah, we're going into a solar maximum, which means more sunspots, uh, more activity on the sun. Right here was that um, X2.87 that occurred. Let me bring it up over here. You can see it. X287. Since then, there has been uh, this M-class fla flare, M6.97. And then, you know, quite a few little smaller ones. These would all be C-class flares. So what they're saying for a G1 to a G2 storm to impact us tonight into tomorrow 
is that at high latitudes, power systems may experience voltage alarms. Long duration storms may cause transformer damage. I wonder if we're going to see more of them blow up. For satellites, corrective actions to orientation may be required by ground control. Changes in drag affect orbit predictions. Yeah, I wonder how it's going to affect Starlink because those are a very low orbit. And is it going to have an effect on that one uh, telescope, the satellite that I talked about before, um, which they're just going to let crash back into the Earth? What's it going to do to the Hubble telescope? They already have that one shut down because of the gyroscopes went out. High frequency radio can fade at higher latitudes and auroras may be seen as low as New York and Idaho. Now, if it only reaches a G1 minor storm, it says weak power grid fluctuations can occur. You might see your power flickering. And it would only be minor impacts on satellites. But this is interesting. Migratory animals are affected in this and high levels auroras are commonly visible at high latitudes uh, such as northern Michigan and Maine. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, it's going to affect migratory animals. Remember? <laughs> yeah. Did you watch that uh, movie, Leave the World Behind, where the migratory animals were congregating in weird areas? Something to think about. And that one girl kept, you know, she was wearing that NASA shirt. And I have told you before that it does affect the Earth in the way of earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. If there is a fault line that's ready to go, this could be all it needs to trigger a large earthquake or a volcanic eruption. Yeah, here it shows the uh, solar cycle. Yeah, and looks like uh, next year and into, um, yeah, look at that, uh, 2026, 2027. We are so dependent upon the internet and our power. Um, yeah, and it's just starting. Look at that. Yeah, what is going to happen next year, right? This is also going to heat up our Earth stratosphere. I've talked about that before, how when they impact our Earth, how it heats it up. So it's not always global warming. But anyways, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I got another PayPal donation and a pot of coffee thank you so much god bless you look at that how it flashed always be prepared please stay safe and i will talk to you later god bless you bye